In this video, I want to say a little bit about the difference between discrete and continuous random variables. These are some mathematical details that I don't want to get into too much, but I also can't avoid entirely, so I'm going to see if I can just say a little bit about them here. So a discrete random variable, that's like the word frequencies, or the number of tosses it takes for me to throw something out. So there, the outcome, x, can take on only a discrete set. Let's imagine for simplicity, one, two, three, four. So then we might be interested in P of X, and that would just be probability. So for example, P of three equals 0 0.2 means probability that X equals three 0.2. So there's a 20% chance that x, whatever that might be in this case, happens to be 3. So uh, for continuous situations, for example, suppose x isn't just 1, 2, 3, or 4, but could be any positive real number or any number between 1 and 4. So along a continuum, there's no gaps, there's no numbers missing. Well, these are somewhat different and have to be treated different mathematically. So here, P of X is not a probability, but is something called a probability density. And saying something like P of three equals 0 0.2 does not mean that the probability that X is three is 0 0.2. Here's maybe a way to think about that. Um, here, 3 is one outcome among four possibilities. Here, 3 is one outcome among an infinite number, in fact, an uncountably infinite number. So um, very roughly speaking, you know, to calculate this, we would do the number of occurrences divided by the number of um, possible outcomes. We would get 4. Here, we're dividing by infinity. Everything's going to be 0. So instead, um, we're always we always speak about ranges of values of x in this case. So what this means is that the probability that x is between three and three plus delta x is approximately 0 0.2 times delta x. So that's a, a mouthful, um, and if you haven't seen it before, that might look a little weird. But the idea is that when x is continuous and can take on any value, we don't want to talk about x being exactly, exactly 3. We want to say, well, what fraction of the values of x are in a certain range around x equals 3? So when one is thinking about probability, as we mostly will be in this course at sort of a 10,000-foot level up here, we don't really need to worry about the difference between these two types of situations. I'll mostly be working with discrete, but the intuition and general lessons that, um, uh, that, I'll, th that we'll learn apply equally well to these sorts of things. The difference, however, comes when one is trying to work with these objects mathematically. And so as this just begins to hint, discrete probability and continuous probability are different mathematical entities and so needed to be need to be handled a little bit differently. Interestingly, interestingly, to me at least, discrete I think is much cleaner conceptually, but is actually sometimes harder to work with mathematically because one's having to do sums um, which can be difficult to evaluate. Continuous uh, situations, which are trickier conceptually perhaps, can sometimes be easier to deal with because one can work with integrals instead of sums. So in any event, discrete and continuous probability are um, different, uh, different entities, behave, have different mathematical properties, and need to be treated differently. I don't think we'll need to worry about that too much in this course, but I did want to at least mention this uh, to avoid any potential confusion. Um, the distinction between these two is a, pretty, is a very standard topic in probability. You can find it in most probability textbooks, statistics books. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of good resources uh, online. So uh, that is continuous versus discrete. 
And what we're going to do in the next, um, next subunit, the next set of videos, is so we're going to look more carefully at power laws, learn about their mathematical properties, and see how they're different from other distributions and how they're related to fractals.